It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Alex Lindsay is back in studio. Renee Ritchie and Andy Anako are here, too. Apple's big third quarter earnings report is coming up in just a few minutes right after the show. But we'll talk about what to expect and what to look for, along with rumors about a new iWatch called the iTime. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 412, recorded July 22nd, 2014. I time. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,700 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. Try it free for seven days. Visit lynda.com slash MacBreak. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash MacBreak. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code MacBreak. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show that covers Macintosh, Apple, uh, and stuff like that. iOS. Whoa! Alex Lindsay. Whoa! Holy cow. Alex Lindsay it. is here from Pixel Core, back from D.C., North Carolina. Where are you heading to next? Portland tomorrow. Portland, Oregon. And then um, that's it. And then I'll come back. There you go. Yep. Also with us, Renee Ritchie from imore.com. He's in Canada. I'm in Chris Hatfield's Canada, yes. Yes. It's all it's Chris Hatfield's Canada now. It's no longer going to be Canada. It's always going to be known as Chris, Chris Hatfield's, Hatfield's Canada. Canada. We were watching before the show began. We were watching uh, Commander Hatfield, who was, uh, of course, on the ISS and really did a lot of good for uh, mm -hmm. space and for Canada. I mean, he was just great up there. Did it, In fact, he even did his version of ground control to me. It was Tom. awesome. Up in the ISS. Yes. Yep. That is the way, the way he's to do made it. He and his brother have made a new video for Canada. They made it for Canada Day about three weeks ago. Uh, and uh, we were just watching it before the show and all getting teary-eyed. He's terrific. Oh, planning <laughs> our trips to Canada. <laughs> Alex and I used to go up there a lot. Once I, a month? I Yeah, I did a week every month doing, well, five days every month doing. A, and then I'd come up on Thursday. Up. You'd We'd come have up. Friday and then. Help me with the show. I'd hang out on Saturday. Do. Wander around Toronto. You should come back. I, I really enjoyed that. I didn't enjoy all the all the travel, but I enjoyed it. Hey, there's Andy Anako uh, of the uh, Chicago Sun Times and the Celestial Ways of Bandwidth, and behind him, the young Monty Python. <laughs> yeah, I was looking. For, I was looking for. Uh, I was grumbling before the show because there's. I, I seem to have a computer shaped object next to me. It's an art installation meant to comment on the futility of comp computing in general. Uh, lovingly crafted. It's like a Jeffrey Koons piece where they've got every single contour of a balloon animal, only it's not actually a balloon animal. <laughs> as I as I find out when I try to actually make it do something that a MacBook would do, uh, and so instead of getting the picture that I wanted to put up there, it, <laughs> it's just a I, random it, 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 it All I did was curse for a while and then say, okay, here's a Python picture. I'll what did that. you want hey. up there? Something that you 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 shot yourself? <laughs> no, there was a, there was a there was a uh, uh, they they released a bunch of like uh, press new press photos for their for the O2 tour, and a bunch of them are just you just see <laughs> you just see this group photo of these men in their early seventies looking like that grandpa that the kids love but that their parents will <laughs> never ever let them stay overnight or more than a weekend with because if they they'll come back making messes of the walls and telling stories about how oh grandpa like i, I told him how much i like bears and so we went into the zoo and climbed all over the enclosure so oh, yeah <laughs> that's exactly. what i was looking for. no it's just people who like have lived good lives that allow them to be 71 year old very very fun men <laughs> uh I, we're here to talk uh, Apple, but of course the big story of the day will happen uh, this afternoon in about two hours. Uh, Apple's uh, third quarter results. We're going to find out how how well the printing presses were working. Yeah. <laughs> well, the third quarter is not the most important quarter. No. It's not the least important quarter. It's kind of in the middle, right? Yeah, you know. It's up there with a second, but not as important as the fourth. There's no new products and no holiday quarter right. in this one. Yeah. Predictions? Which, the analysts seem to think it'll be still a good quarter. Of course, this is the first time the new... Apple CFO will be uh, presumably leading the call, the analyst call. Luca Maestri. Is that how you say? I didn't say his name because I didn't know Luca could I do, but it's so. Maestri. I think it's Maestri. So. Nice Italian boy. 
and uh, and he uh, he I presume Tim Cook will join him, and we'll be yep. listening very carefully to see what Luca and Tim in you know kind of hint at for the fourth quarter because that's I'm really. I'm waiting for Gene Munster's television question. I, every time I can't wait. <laughs> what does he? What like what does he ask? He asked. He just asked. He asked the same question almost every time, and with but with a new you know new uh, variation. And it's just interesting to watch how fast Tim Cook can slap that ball back at him. It's become a thing. <laughs> uh, uh, the thing they'll be listening for is Tim Cook, who will say we've got some wonderfully exciting new categories. New categories. New categories. I think he's close to being able to just say new categories now. But. Mm -hmm. um, will they? They're not going to. Veteran Apple watchers. Let me ask you. Are they going to say anything important? No. I mean, the, no, the most that will happen is next one. They might say when OS X is coming out or something. You know, they, next they do one. that once in a while. Not this one. No, this one, Not almost never do they say anything. This is, they might this poke is, fun of Android a little bit, but that's about the highlight. Yeah, so yeah. the little toxic health stew. <laughs> <laughs> um, Delicious with bread. Actually, Android and uh, globally, Android is kicking Apple's butt. I don't know if Apple in really market cares. Share. In market share. If, yeah. if market share is your metric, yeah. Right. And it's it's it, you can almost say that Android is a totally different product than iOS is. So it's hard to really compare apples to or, apples to oranges that way. And in the US, uh, I think uh, iPhone is still at least half the market, if not more. Yeah. There, see, when, when we talk about down earnings in the with that the, the third quarter is a, not a very, not a very big quarter, you mean that to get the money from where they're making it to where they need to put it. They don't need to call their employees and say, does anybody know somebody who has a pickup truck because we don't have <laughs> enough cargo capacity? It means that they can actually just lease the tractor trailers they normally lease and do that. So that's what we're talking about in terms of profitability. I suppose they'll spend some time talking about the uh, enterprise story and uh, the fact yeah. that they're teaming with uh, IBM to create uh, mobile apps for iOS. Yeah, but of course it will always it will always be here's how this is going here's how we're uh, we're going to expect the next quarter to go or the next uh, the rest of the year to go. Also, given that as we as we've been saying, there's not been a big product rollout or a big ball drop uh, for uh, that that will uh, tick anything up. There's plenty of dead air in there to say that yes, we're we're maybe down two percent from last year or we're up only two only two percent from last year. But we also anticipate that with our new strategic partnership with a, with IBM, that blah blah blah. So this is it's every when you look. I've, I've been reading, rereading transcripts to sort of refresh myself, uh, and yeah, they almost never say anything that has anything other than to do with here's how much money we're making, here's how much money we expect to make next year, and here's why we didn't make as much money in a certain category. Why? Why you here's anticipating why you're going to ask us why we didn't make as much money on iPad this quarter as we did the same quarter of last year. So very very boring. I, I, the only thing I'm really interested in to see is how if the amount of glee in uh, Tim Cook's voice will come through when he does mention we anticipate a, an, an exciting new product category in the fall uh, because that's something that they could mention, but you wouldn't hear them uh, say any details, of course, but sometimes it's something about the tone of their voice and how they put it that you say, oh, they've got the fi they've got a final hardware and there's a, t is there an interesting tan line on Tim's wrist that doesn't match the shape of any known uh, watch or fitness band? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But that's that's all I'm looking forward to. Somebody at VentureBeat got drunk and uh, wrote an article saying that maybe <laughs> Siri and Watson would uh, unite. <laughs> You'd have to be pretty out of it to think that that's even like possible. Watson, of course, mm. is a series of programs running on a, a massive mainframe computer. Yeah, because uh, it's, it's not it's not like a it's not like a browser plugin. They don't just <laughs> to rewrite some JavaScript. Mike make it could work. win at, Je at Jeopardy. Yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, I mean, it's a it's a nice it's a nice fantasy piece when you start to think about. I mean, if, if these if this partnership works out and IBM starts to say, you know what? I mean, we'll give you very attractive terms on this uh, on this code if you want to figure out how to hook up. Uh, so, but of course, I think that just the card the, the cartoons and uh, uh, <laughs> in uh, in Joy Tech about Siri shacking up with Watson. I don't think that we want yeah, to see that. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It, one of the authors is Devendra Hardwar, who's actually really smart. So I don't I, I think this is really more of a measure of how desperate the press is to say something about Apple. And by the way, we share your desperation. Uh, <laughs> but this is our whole I, show. I, I, you just have a byline. Yeah, you, you, know? just, you have a fi file of one piece. We got to do two hours on this. Thing. The IBM news, I think, was interesting, though. If for nothing else, you got to hear Tim Cook speak enterprise language again. Oh, I think yeah. it's very big. Um, oh, yeah, some no, have no. said this might be the, the most important deal Apple's ever made. It, 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 putting Apple in the enterprise could be huge, and it is a shot across the bow for both Google and Microsoft. 
Yeah. And, and what, I, what I love about still. it, yeah. What, what I love about it is that it really is the sort of it's such a natural fit for both companies that I'm amazed that no one has posited before that hey I wonder if they'll if Apple and IBM will ever get together because you really do talk about how Apple sucks at uh, at, at appealing to enterprise all Apple all IBM does is appeal to enterprise uh, IBM's uh, IBM is not good at, uh, at it, it does nothing but deploy hardware Apple does nothing but sell hardware uh, it's just like man why did why did these people not get together before it's such a beautiful thing uh, and it also it also reminds us that we're going to have to redefine what we think about Apple in the future we uh, if I think for the past couple of years I think everybody has been talking about how uh, Apple is big in business, they're big in enterprise, but they really are a consumer-focused company. This is, I think, another tick, tick mark in the uh, argument that they don't want to be any one kind of company. They really want to be Apple. And it really adds a massive sales force to, uh, to out there in an area that yeah. Apple doesn't have much of a sales force. IBM is really, that's what IBM is nowadays. It's, a sales it's really interesting, too, business. because um, everyone's always looking for where, like, iPhone is still the biggest business. It makes the most money, and everyone's always interested, what's the next bit of low, lowest hanging fruit? And that, for a long time, was China Mobile. When are they going to get right. China Mobile? Right. They've got that now, so everyone wants to know what's next. And while Apple has, I think, 98% penetration in global 500, Fortune 500, that's breadth. That's not depth. And Apple obviously sees a tremendous opportunity to not, you know, sell into enterprise, but to sell a whole lot more into enterprise. But they're ill-equipped to do that. It's not their culture. Yep. It's not their sales force. And IBM is a really good fit. And I think for the timing part of it, there's a lot of things, interesting things going into iOS 8. There's a lot better mobile device management, which, you know, has some downsides. I'm sure we'll talk about later. But also things like... Um, you, there's an extension. So Apple has iCloud Drive now in iOS 8, but there's also document and storage provider extensions so that whatever enterprise solution Microsoft provides can live alongside or instead of iCloud Drive. And it'll be just as easy to get to all your corporate stuff as it is to get you know a normal person to get to their iCloud stuff. So to Andy's point, it's an incredibly good relationship for them. Well, and, 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 and I think that IBM is the most natural one that isn't a competitor. I mean, I don't think there's any other enterprise uh, company that wouldn't look like a competitor to Apple yeah. for them to partner they're with. They're so little SAP. Yeah, they're just not it's just complete two different yeah, worlds no, that that they need. They each need each other, but there's not, you know, everyone else that's in the enterprise world, I think Apple might see as a uh, competitor or they might see Apple as a competitor. Yeah, it's like a, it's like when we were talking about the Beats deal, we have to talk about okay, so Beats, but Beats is in this, a lot of the same segment of the same business as Apple. Does this mean that Beats will no longer exist? Does it mean their team is going to be working on other people? With this partnership, it's no. Again, there is nobody at IBM who's in the business of making, designing, and selling hardware like this. At Apple, like Renee said, they just don't understand enterprise. They have they are pleased and happy that they've managed to fall ass backward into a huge market, even though this is not something that they have a lot of expertise with and it's just no oh there's almost no overlap as tim him said as his himself said it's like two puzzle pieces clicking together yeah, the, it's interesting uh, because there's uh the the thing with the partnerships is apple feels burned by microsoft over the mac still that's part of their historic culture they feel burned by google and samsung who they, they had as partners but who became competitors it is incredibly unlikely ibm is working on a lotus notes phone or anything of that nature <laughs> so that's like wide open for apple and at the same time it's not obvious to alex's point where other people could go like if google wanted to make this relationship their relationship with oracle is not very good oracle's probably not a good candidate for them to approach a partnership uh, sap is not terribly exciting there's not a lot of players IBM size, and of those players, I think Ab IBM is absolutely the most interesting one for Apple. Golf stud in a chat room also says this could be huge in healthcare. Uh, when we say enterprise, I always think of you know Fortune 500 companies, but there are a lot of uh, enterprises like uh, the medical industry where uh, Apple could really have a strong position if teamed well, up with IBM and given the right kind of software. I, I think in, in, in healthcare and in almost every business out there, there's all these efficiency problems that, you know, IBM's trying to fix. I think that Apple's trying to fix. And there's a huge opportunity for all these companies, whether it's Microsoft or Google or Salesforce or, or any of these other companies to make these systems more efficient. I mean, you know, I, I look at, we're doing a huge overhaul in our company right now to automate a lot of stuff um, it, it, just to allow us to do more with the people that we have. And, and, uh, I think that you're seeing every company has to look at that. And I think IBM has the, the ears of all those companies and Apple has the hardware and software to do it. And, or, and IBM has a lot of that. Analysts uh, are estimating the consensus estimate is that Apple will earn. And so you want to know what this estimate is because 
Apple will probably usually comes in and does better yep. because they sandbag. They the sandbag. They like, just constantly. Yeah, like, that's gonna be horrible. There's a, there much. was a, there was a there was a storm in the sun. And yeah, we think that's that that's going to yeah. affect things. But the analysts are thinking a dollar twenty three a share. So you want to watch that. That's kind of the. Mm -hmm. Did they beat that? Did they? If they did, then the stock market will love them. And I think this is the first online. post split earnings report. So what it means that's for right. share is probably different. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, it's a seven for one stock split. split. Uh, the same period a year ago, Apple was seven dollars and forty seven cents a share. So a buck twenty three would be an increase uh, year over year. Uh, sales uh, analysts say Apple should report revenue of somewhere around thirty seven or thirty eight billion dollars. In uh, last year, they did thirty five billion dollars. So so much gross money. There. And by the way, it's their slowest quarter. Touching. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for my company to get to a point where the slowest quarter is $37 billion. Apple stock is up 18% this year. Uh, on July 16th, a little less than a week ago, it reached a 52-week high of $97.10 a share. Now, they will also, as you mentioned, as we talked, they will talk about IBM, certainly. Uh, they they might talk about Beats. That would be interesting. I, you know, they've yeah. been dead silent ever since the acquisition. Of course, it's not. Uh, it hasn't cleared yet. Um, when does that happen? I don't know if they're in a quiet period before it does or not. It was their biggest acquisition in history. So from a pure financial point of view, it does impact the quarter. $3.1 billion. Kind of. We'll trade I mean, it impacts the call. a little bit. <laughs> they got some money. A little money in the side. A little something going on. Um, but I wonder, you know, we haven't really heard much about it. Do you think that, the, that when, you know, <laughs> okay, I'm going to get on my hobby horse here. <laughs> but, do you, but do you think that when the... the uh, sale does clear anything at all will have changed i think we hear more about it in september i think i think that's the right time for apple to start and talking music new beats headphones 20 I'm, I'm 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 hoping for 24 bit canceling whole different beats <laughs> but, Lightning but again uh, whatever the analysts are looking for or listening for uh, we normal people will be l l looking and listening for just something from Tim. Can you give us some color on Apple's plans for the living room? <laughs> color, yeah, exactly, color. <laughs> something. Um, so that's at 2 p.m. Pacific, so two and a half hours from right now. We will probably not be covering that live, but we'll have certainly a wrap-up on tech news tonight, which is shortly thereafter. Who knows? If it's a slow day, maybe we'll just join the conference call. Listen in. Yeah. You could do that, right? Yeah. It's public. Mm -hmm. Anybody yep. can dial in. Hi, my name is Leo Laporte from Mac Break Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> I have Tim. a question for Tim. It's in three parts. <laughs> it's in three parts. I would like That's to do that. Is. It's a, a three-part question. If you wouldn't mind coming back to me again and again so I can continue. Yes, exactly. I have a song that's in, that's in an iTunes playlist, but it keeps telling me it can't <laughs> sync to my device because it's not in iCloud. Hey, the new I iTunes is here. The it. new iTunes is here. Have you, has anybody played with the new iTunes yeah. yet? Yeah. Beta 12. 12 beta. Yep. Or for our British listeners, beta. <laughs> beta? Beta? What is, uh, they say, new and shiny? It's, it, yeah, it's got the Yosemite makeover. It's a Yosemite yeah. version. So this, does this come with Yosemite Preview or? Preview 4, yeah. Okay. Developer Preview 4. Okay. Yeah. Um, Based on screenshots that I have seen posted publicly online, uh, it's it looks like a, a big step forward. Uh, one of the things that really caught my eye is that now it's uh, they've basically put rolled back a little bit on this one window interface so that it's now easier to manage multiple playlists without having to expose your playlist list by doing it as a pop up. Now you can have it as a permanent sidebar. Uh, there's a little more clarity between the difference between what's actually on your Mac and what you have stored in the cloud and what's in the store. It's not nearly as modal as it once be a lot once was. Uh, there's once a lot be? of fun. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you speaking I see, the language I'm, I'm, of the people now? It's a Canadian hat. <laughs> I'm switching. I'm, switch, I'm, I'm on seltzer water, okay? There's no caffeine. Oh, there's, there's, no, no, caffeine. there's no phosphoric acid. And I am double caffeinated okay. today, so uh, no wonder. <laughs> That's why I jumped on you. Sorry. Basically, basically there, there, there seems there is, it, it will be familiar to existing users of iTunes, but it will seem like a very good upgrade of it. Again, yeah. particularly if you, for me, particularly if you manage a lot of playlists, because to, to me, it, that, that's the biggest failing, I think, of the redesign for me personally, because I used to have a lot of fun building playlists, and now it's just become so difficult to do that it's like, okay, I'll just, I'll, I'll just pick songs and put them on my phone manually and then deal with whatever I have. I just don't, you never, do you, I don't do it recreational anymore. Do you build a lot of playlists on iTunes these days? 
at all. Not, I mean, or have, I mean, I have to admit that once I started using Spotify, I kind of stopped. Yeah, I don't either. Well, I never, well, I never, I never really made the switch to Spotify okay. uh, or any of the, even though I do have a, a Google Music uh, All Access account, mm -hmm. uh, partly because I don't, uh, partly because I don't like being locked into one player. Also, and this is not something that I can unilaterally defend. I'm very, very worried about what the switch to an all subscription music world will do to artists because I don't think they're going to get paid what they deserve to be paid for an album that is essentially part of your permanent library and you listen to all the time. You, you keep you, you, every time that a, 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 even a big popular artist talks about how much money they get off of streaming off of Spotify, it becomes basically the amount of money that they would tip a bellhop at one of the hotels that they check into. It's like literally like less than a hundred dollars or four hundred dollars, well, five hundred dollars. Depend. It's half a cent per play. It's not much. It's half a cent per play, and, and Should, the, the uh, issue is: Do we feel guilty? No, I don't it? feel guilty. It's a just a different business model. I mean, I think cut that your hair and get oh, a job. I, 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 was, I, was, I, I, I wouldn't say I feel guilty. Now. Also, also, I like I like the fact that my music library is something that I permanently have. That this is not something that's going to change if I decide to switch from Spotify to another service. It's not something that's going to change if someone buys Spotify and decides that they're going to charge so much for the service that I don't want to pay it anymore. Uh, there's, I guess, there are a lot of factors to it, but that is one. I have to admit that is one factor. No, it's a, it's a good factor. I mean, because I was very much in that zone for a long time, and I and I still do that with movies for some reason. I still buy movies because I just want to download them. I just just have them downloaded. But the um, uh, but I find that with the music, it it's one of those things that I always feel like I'll just build the playlist on a new service if I need to, you know, because the same all the services are going to have whatever set no, of music. I mean, it twenty million songs is all the same. It's all it's it's the same twenty. I mean, I'm not I'm not that I don't have that much obscure stuff that I'm interested in. The only thing I'm worried about is get you know I have well, I have one playlist with like four hundred songs, so figuring that out would be problematic. But the um, what is that playlist for? What that, is, that, that is the playlist I listen to all day. That's your that's it's the like. It's like the best Work songs ever. Jam. You know, like, like you know, and, and it's just you like 400. You that. Can you, you know, you can share on Spotify. Know, By the I've way, been a little hesitant. That's, a, that's an example of something you can do on Spotify that's <clears> so great that Apple's... This is life's work. They tried really. to do with Ping, but they, that failed, and Apple's never really achieved that. Oh, Ping. <laughs> I'm going to release some more playlists soon. <laughs> I like I've got an idea. I'd I've got like an idea. to hear your workday playlist. Well, I'm, I, what I was going to do is I was going to actually start doing playlists. People should let me know if they think this is a good idea or not. But um, that I was going to start doing a playlist where I actually annotate some of the songs, like tell you like like Great. lost lost alternative rock, you know, like yeah. and, and make it like a little radio <laughs> stuff. You used show. to be a, a music director and you used to do radio, and, that's and there's what we all did. these songs that I heard when, that that, yeah. that we heard when we were on radio. You'd when hear you all these songs coming radio, up that never made it. You'd say, "Now let me tell you a little bit about yeah, this exactly. deep track." I'm, I'm basically rebuilding Rock Over London. I think that's great. Hello, this is Graham Dean, and you all have seen the Rock Over London. Remember that? Do you remember that? Well, I think you need to You're use this new medium and do something like that. I'm I've been working on it. I've been writing them. That'd be great. You just have to record DJ it. DJ Alex. Oh, well, you'd record them as so, like so my whole, my, my, whole, my whole plan is I'm going to upload. That'd be upload. part of the playlist. Yeah, see? Can you do that with Spotify? Can you mm -hmm. put a, an arbitrary track in, in mm -hmm. the playlist? And well, not through Spotify. You have to do it through it. Something else. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's my big plan. We'll see. I'll I let you guys know. know. I feel a little guilty. I mean, I use Pandora. I use uh, Google Music. Here's, I, here's my thing, though, is that, is that I, so I paid, like, so I, I bought, you know, in 19, um, 1986, I bought English Settlement by XTC. You bought it. Songs per, uh, the, the payment per time I listened to No Thugs in Our House is definitely, would definitely half equal a cent. half a cent each. Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, I paid, it, I paid for the album once, but I listened to the song, like, That's you know, every point. day. You know, you're, you're getting paid every single time someone's playing it rather than right. just when they bought. So I think that the comparison sometimes I don't think is is completely accurate. Of And, and I also think that the issue with, with, with subscription is, is that, yeah, it makes a certain amount of money for the artist at 10 million subscribers. But what if someone like Apple comes in or, 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 or Spotify is incredibly successful and you move to 100 million or 200 million or 300 million subscribers? At that time, if you're a popular artist, at least, you're going to make, theoretically, a lot more money because you're still getting paid the, the half a cent, you know, point, point oh, oh five or point oh, oh six dollars uh, um, per play, and it's just a lot more people playing it. But I think that right now, as, as a niche market, of course, it's not making as much money, but the bottom line is, is there's no... I think most artists have given up the thought that, that selling their music per song or per album is going to make a living. I mean, most of them are moving on to the 360 deals and you know, a lot of other things that they can, you know, make money on a lot of other things other than their music. We're going to take a break. When we come back, let's talk about that uh, patent that's floating around of the uh, new iWatch. Apple applied for the patent. Does it mean they're actually going to make something like that? And uh, the uh, security researcher who's uh, PowerPoint at uh, the Hope X conference 
It's done a lot of iOS users. Actually, Steve Gibson will be talking about it. Uh, it's one of the few times I wish Security Now was first. I want to watch that before the show. Yeah, Steve <laughs> offered to come on the show, and I said, no, we'll just tell everybody to stay tuned because uh, Steve's going to do a deep dive. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a second. First, I want to talk a little bit about my friends at lynda.com. And I literally mean my friends because so many of the people you and I my know. My friends. Our friends. Linda's friends. Teach <laughs> at lynda.com. Yep. What would you like to learn today? Lynda.com has amazing courses, more than 2,000 video courses in topics like software, photography, business, 3D animation, making albums, making music, web design. That's actually how they started. Linda Wyman, the founder at Lynda.com, she was on the screensavers all the time talking about web design because she wrote books about right. uh, creating websites and so forth. And she realized there was a better way than writing a book was to make uh, beautiful video courses. They have, uh, I was just talking to them, they have in their Santa Barbara offices nine video, they have, it's huge, it's bigger than this, nine video production uh, studios where their teachers can come and they can uh, create courses. They create courses so fast, you know, the minute Mavericks uh, came out, they had courses in Mavericks. Windows 8.1, they had it. As soon as Yosemite comes out, there will be courses from Really great, knowledgeable people. People like Bert Monroy. We and it's great. Uh, it's great even for little through. tips. You know, I, I had I had one. I think I, I wanted to figure out how to uh, send a video to my guys. On this, <laughs> I want you to place a lav. There's like a whole little ten minute thing on Linda.com on how to how to, how to put a lav microphone. <laughs> that's, that's what I mean here. That's what I'm like, talking this is the about. The last time I'm going to explain this to you. Two thousands. <laughs> yeah. Actually, a lot of businesses. In fact, we have a Linda uh, mm -hmm. Enterprise account. Yep. A lot of businesses do that because it's just so useful. Mm -hmm. Whether you have a you know a new editor, we just Zach just joined us, and we want to get him uh, trained up in the Final Cut. Um, we have uh, we're moving our uh, our stuff to Premiere. Of course, we'll be doing a lot of Linda mm -hmm. training there. Um, Twenty seven hundred sixty video courses, more dozens more uh, every month. They work directly with the software companies, so they'll get that training to you fast. Sometimes even the same day the new version. Or release hits the market so you're always up to speed courses for every level beginner intermediate advanced you can watch on your computer your tablet your mobile device you can download uh and watch in the air if you want there it is there's actually placement. another one there's, a, there's, another, there's another one there's on more than one yeah there's more than one on lynda.com that, that, if you go fantastic yeah uh, let's see, but they have hiding live. So, yeah, lobs. their search is great. I just searched for love, Mike, and there's well, just all sorts. Part of that's because every uh, every course it has a, a transcription, so you yeah. can dig into the transcription and find that exact part of the course. Yeah. So whether you have just a few minutes, or maybe you've got a week and you really want to study something, in fact, we're going to give you a week of Lynda.com. That's a very nice value. Twenty five dollars a month gives you access to their entire course library. Thirty seven dollars fifty cents a month, you can subscribe to the premium plan. And that includes exercise files. So if you're doing Photoshop, for instance, you'll get the, the files that Bert Monroy or others are working on. And you can follow along with the instructors. Ben Long teaches there. Derek Story, Derek Street. I mean, so many great people that we know teach at yep. lynda.com. That's how we know how good lynda.com is. That's the broadcaster's reach he just did there on that video. That's how it you, is. Do, you see me do Although, that every day. Oh, I, I, found a, I found a great tip for that. It's a whole other story. It's not part of the ad. <laughs> And look, this is how Rayvon used to do it with a little piece of tape and the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, you got the little... Yeah, it's, this guy's good. This is like... This is if you're going to hide it. I might have my engineers uh, watch this one. This is good. LYNDA.com slash MacBreak. You're going to get seven days, the run of the place, every video, every course free for the next seven days. LYNDA.com slash MacBreak. And you can literally do what we just did, which is, I'm sure that's a larger search, course on yep. mics or studio production. But the key is you can find the eight minutes of, oh, I don't, it's not, a, oh, I, I need to, you don't have to do it like I'm just trying to learn all of Photoshop. It's like, I need to know how to do this thing in Photoshop. And right. you search it, and there's a little eight minute section or this thing in Cinema 4D. I don't understand how to set this up and someone's done it. I love it. Linda, L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash Mac Break. We love them. And we thank them so much for their support of uh, Mac Break Weekly. So I don't usually talk about patents because, as we've mentioned before, Apple has a whole building full of lawyers. <laughs> Their sole job, in fact, they even do this. They'll go around to different departments and groups, sit them down and say, okay, what'd you, what'd you do today? I could patent that. And they literally patent everything. And it doesn't you know, mean they're going to make it. It doesn't mean it's a product they're even considering. It's more, it's as much defensive as anything else, yep. right? So, but there is a new iWatch patent. And iTime, I think. iTime, which kind of is not a good name. 
Mostly because uh, I think that's the last thing that any uh, smartwatch is about is time. That's like calling a, you know, calling the like iPhone. Calling a phone. iPhone. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's crazy talk. It's crazy. Like crazy. That. So they did get this patent. Uh, that's how we know it was published from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office for the iTime. It's interesting because it has circuitry in the straps. This, I don't think this is like anything Apple's considering because it's really much more like a nano watch. Uh, the the timepiece itself gets snapped in kind of like a nano, like an iPod so that, nano. That'd be really interesting. It's the uh, next nano, Leo. It, uh, the... Uh, the idea of this is the, is the strap uh, contains all sorts of features uh, at, that are separate from the central unit. The strap could have GPS, Wi-Fi, haptic feedback, accelerometers. Well, do keep in mind that Laser that could beams. be intentional because they can, they can get the patent on this. Base, they, what they're getting a patent on is a basic technology where you have a band that has electronic and uh, has support electronics inside it and a module you snap in and out. Right. And so that way they, people have seen the Nano. The Nano is established. They can, do, they can use the Nano for the art without revealing whatever it is they plan to make ah. at some point in the future. Oh, that's, it. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. But again, I think it's, I don't know, I think it's pretty hard to read patents, look at them and say, oh, this yeah. must be a clue as to what Apple's working on. It isn't necessarily. It might be. Maybe they'll just license it and the retired engineer will get a check in 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> a wrist-worn wearable with augmented strap capabilities. Oh, and support for arm and wrist gestures. Yeah. But I mean, it's, hard, it's not hard to imagine that there will be smart watch patent suits the way there are smartphone patent suits. And Apple, like yeah. everyone else, is going to want their as much exactly. coverage as possible. It's defensive as much as... Uh... It can be. I think it's a really interesting way to think about uh, something that's you always have with you, maybe not always wearing it on your wrist. I'm wearing the Android Wear watch. Um, Which one, Leo? Uh, oh, I have the LG, but they're both the same. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, it's nice. It's like it's like the Pebble. It t lets me know. I mean, I can read texts. I got just got a text. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, there's, a, there's a text from Lisa. The download of something is complete. I don't know why. Um, it's a plane know, overhead. Right. Not notifications, all sorts of stuff. And then it's a watch. Yep. Uh, and I could talk to it. I could tap it. Send text to Lisa. I'll help you with that later. And then it will uh, automatically uh, send it. Uh, actually, it doesn't do a... Con one thing that's not good, it doesn't do a confirmation. So... You don't know if it actually did it or not. You can not. use it's that to your advantage, like... Leo. I swear I sent that text, honey. I swear. <laughs> I, I, I talked to my watch. No, it says I sent it, but what it doesn't do is confirm that it got it wrote what you said. Uh. So you get kind of hilarious <laughs> right. quotes. It's like, just this it's like a real damn you autocorrect because there's no second chance. It's like, okay. I, I packaged it. the cupcakes into the Audi. But that could and be, now yes, you're not coming exactly. home tonight. But that could be fixed. But, right. I mean, so it's somewhat useful. I could talk to it. I can say... Uh, listen to Johan Bach, and it will play Bach on my phone because it's tied to the, It's very tightly integrated with the phone, so you yeah. could command your phone with. I mean, there's, but it's not something you're going to say to people. Oh, you got to have this. It really isn't like that. Not yet. And I don't think an iWatch is necessary. Well, we've talked well, about this before. It, I don't. I just yeah, don't see exactly. what Apple could do that could make this something everybody has to have. And well, I think that's what's going to make it so spectacular when it does happen. Right. We, we say we said the same thing about a phone and about a about a tablet. And They've done it before. Wow. With that rotor yeah. Reel. yeah. Done it before. They're definitely keeping their powder dry. I mean, you know, it's like yeah. you're watching all these people go, and Apple's just no comment, no comment, yeah. no comment. I, I, I can I can finally admit something that I was this close to like having to write a check to Pebble. And to say that, yeah, I lost your watch. Oh. <laughs> I can't find it anywhere. I'm just going to have to buy it from you. I know it's here somewhere. I'm sure I'll find it when I do like my, my spring cleaning, but I can't find it. Uh, and and I was going to use this in my review as, a, as an ex explanation of some of the unseen problems of these wearables where – you're wearing it, you're wearing it, you're wearing it, but it needs to be recharged on a very, very quick basis. And if it's, if it's in the middle of the day and your battery dies and you find yourself that you're wearing a dead piece of whatever on your wrist, you take it off, you put it in a pocket or you put it in your laptop bag. And that's how I thought that I lost it because I, you know, I, I'm not going to wear this all, all day. And then, of course, I found it. It I, turns out that after I finished my research, I put it back in the box that it came in and prepared Smart to man. set it back, which is the last place I would have looked for it because it was, in fact, a place where a sane person would actually put it but it, but it did really sort of it really did sort of point out that 
it's not only going to be have to be a watch, it's going to have to be a charger that you keep track of, and it's going to have to it, – it's going to probably introduce a lot of problems that we're not going to be able to see until people start wearing them, just like you. I think it's, it's possible it's a losable. They just won't release a watch at all. And no. They're all, no? No, I don't think it's that's possible anymore. It's, it's Apple's biggest troll. <laughs> Apple's just trolling you. Uh, we course, fooled you. It was sneakers all along. <laughs> uh, and, of course, the uh, the other story, which I think is a, a fairly important story, and you're right. We're all waiting to hear what Steve Gibson has to say. Uh, Steve uh, did a uh, very good two-part security now when Apple released its security white paper about what it's doing in modern versions of iOS, particularly on the iPhone 5S, to secure your stuff. And Steve was very favorably impressed. He said, Apple has really gone the extra mile here. They do a lot of things that uh, nobody else is doing. They've really clearly got privacy and security as a primary focus. Uh, he was extremely complimentary. Then along comes uh, Jonathan Zdjarski, who is actually a quite well-known uh, computer security expert and forensic scientist. He actually wrote a paper that was behind a paywall about six months ago. Nobody read then he made a PowerPoint presentation for the Hope Conference in New York last week, and everybody read it. And in fact, Jonathan tweeted something like, boy, there's the power of uh, slides. Right. <laughs> nobody, paid, <laughs> nobody paid attention World to this. World domination. Stuff. Yeah. But uh, he makes some very, very, I think, damaging claims. He doesn't come out and say Apple has provided backdoors for the federal government. Of course, Apple hotly denies that. But he says, for instance, that every single iOS 7 device hundreds of millions of them have a built-in packet sniffers that are running not in developer mode but all the time and can be even connected to via Wi-Fi. So um, uh, law enforcement could, or somebody who knows how to use this, could uh, connect to uh, your iPhone via the Wi-Fi and uh, sniff, use it as a packet sniffer and see everything I you're think, doing. I think they had to get in via USB first. The Wi-Fi direct attack, I think he said, was theoretical. Ah, okay. Nevertheless, a lot of the stuff, it was really, I, I went and read the white paper because I found the slides hard to understand because they, they might seem contradictory, but he's really talking about similar yet related things mm -hmm. a lot. And it made it very dense for me. But when I went and read the white paper, it was clear that a lot of this is based on a couple different hacks. And one is the mobile device management stuff for enterprise, which I think maybe Apple implemented perhaps too quickly trying to, I don't know if it's IBM deal related, but it's incredibly powerful and maybe too powerful. And there's also these undocumented services, the file relays. Um, and the, the packet sniffer, you can have that on almost every Linux box, some of the packet sniffer. It's that it's not constrained to dev mode, that, you know, problematic, that someone has, doesn't have to put their phone in dev mode first. So I, I think it's less, he, he goes to great pains to say that he's not saying anything sinister here, but he thinks legitimately that Apple has to answer a lot of questions about it. Apple uh, very hotly denied it, uh, although yeah. some say kind of, side, kind of a non-denial denial. Um, they sent me their denial. I, got, I, I, I spoke to Apple about it. They sent me a, their statement, and they again... You know, they, it's the same thing with the China thing. They, they believe, they say emphatically that they are, you know, privacy first, um, security first, and that they have not worked with any government to create a backdoor in the system. And that is, that is absolutely a press reply. That is not, you know, Tim Cook or Apple's security department saying something. That's their press department saying it. But, and we talked about this before, when a big company says something like that, they're going to be held to that. And if it's proven otherwise, right. uh, there's going to be, uh, you thought AntennaGate was bad. It would be a lot of repercussions. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought, that they left themselves almost no wiggle room here. So if it turns out that they said, oh, well, we said we didn't work with the government. We just simply anticipated a future need, possibly, <laughs> but we've never worked with the government <laughs> to implement it. this. They will, they will not get away with that. This is, they, they, and they, given that they had a lot of options on how to uh, respond to this or not respond to this, the fact that they picked something that is will screw them mightily in the future if they were waffling on this, I think that's, a, that's very indicative. Uh, one of the things Steve was very impressed with was the uh, the encrypted data on the iPhone. Uh, Zdjarski, whose uh, hacker name, by the way, is Nerve Gas, so I, I believe him. <laughs> if you've got a, if you've got a hacker rates. name like that, that's, that's very important. He says he, almost... He could, he could have been in a 1997 movie about hackers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Nerve Gas. Watch out for him. He says that almost all native application OS data is encrypted with a key, but a key that is not married to the passcode. We knew this. I mean, that was part of what Apple was doing, but rather encrypted with a hardware deduced key. Uh, this is not new. We knew this. We talked. We thought that was a good thing. However, uh, as of iOS 7, third-party documents are encrypted, but library and cache folders usually are not. But here's the here's the damning thing, and I, and I don't think Apple addressed this, and I find this 
Fascinating. When you power up the phone and unlock it, it remains unencrypted until the device is shut down. So I think a lot of us thought that when you pressed the button and locked the screen and you need a passcode to get back into the phone, oh, now it's encrypted. It is not. I'm wondering if that is, I, what I'm curious about is, is, is that a performance thing, like how long it takes to close Maybe. and open? You know, I asked about this. I didn't ask Apple about this, but I asked security people. And, and a couple of things, like, that's again why, like, and Zdowski says this too. He said that he's afraid that journalists are going to take this wrong. And, you know, some of them absolutely did. But there's a couple of things, like the level of security that you need also has to remain functional. It's the same problem that the lock screen has with bypasses, that people can get around it. Because the lock screen doesn't just lock your phone. It lets you make phone calls, lets you access control right. center, Siri notification center. And if you lock it down too much, you can no longer make phone calls, which is technically illegal in many jurisdictions because you have to be able to dial 911 in case of emergency. Emergency. So it's one of those things where there's a tension between security and privacy, and it might be that there are things they can do better. Um, but a lot of the stuff, when you read it, like the the some of the stuff. Well, that the he, point the point uh, before you go on, yeah. That should the takeaway on that is, do do your stuff is not encrypted until you turn off your phone. Yeah, so right. if you're worried, turn off your phone, right? Because just pass, just having the screen lock. Does not I turn off my phone data. by accident all the time. It's <laughs> called running out of battery. Okay, sorry, Renee. I just want to make sure people understood that so that they know if you want to hide your stuff, turn off your phone. Absolutely. And we, we actually on iMore, we're doing a series of things. Like one of the problems also is um, when you connect your computer, your phone to a computer, it creates a pairing record so that when you don't, you have to do that trusted device dialogue. Yes, ask you, this is another you want to trust this device. Yeah, yeah. You press yes, and it maintains that record. And that can be, but a lot of the stuff, for example, the packet sniffer is documented in Apple's developer portal. Uh, one of the components that tells you the protocols that you can initiate if you do break into a phone is open source. Another one, you can pull a whole plist file off that tells you one by one one, what services they are. So there, there's nothing very well hidden about this stuff, which makes me, you know, think that it's more a case of Apple went too fast with some things and maybe has too many pro too many masters are trying to serve with another. Uh, but they, they, there are legitimate security concerns and they, a lot of them can be fixed with Apple's own tools. Yeah, it also bears mentioning that uh, just because Apple is not working with uh, governments in order to provide user data, that's only maybe 20% about you about what you worry about. You worry about the government helping themselves to data uh, with or without uh, a company's involvement and help. So just because the, this, they're making a clear statement doesn't mean that a device isn't vulnerable or that it can't be made a little bit more vulnerable, more secure. And those well, are the kind of and, and vulnerable to uh, hackers too. I mean, if it's vulnerable to governments, it's vulnerable to hackers. It weakens the security overall. Well, and I think that the, the concern that I think this article brings up and I think a lot of things that people are worried about is whether there's any kind of it doesn't mean that Apple's handing off over any data to the NSA or anyone else but there could, you know people are worried about a conversation that said well why don't we just not close that door you know like you know like you know let's not you know let's not do anything about that but let's not you know not even internally so I so here are the questions uh, Jonathan asks Apple did not really directly address any of them to no. my knowledge uh, Renee no. Why is there a packet sniffer running on 600 million personal iOS devices instead of being moved to the developer uh, mount one? Why are there undocumented services, services apparently not used by any of the software on the iPhone, that bypass user backup encryption and uh, allow somebody, wh whoever, to dump mass amounts of personal data from the phone? Why is that there and why is it left on? Why is it most of my user data is still not encrypted with the pin or passphrase, enabling the invasion of my personal privacy by you? He's just talking to Apple here. And finally, why is there still no mechanism to review the devices my iPhone is paired with so I can delete the ones that don't yeah. belong? And that's something uh, that uh, every device should do. Yeah. Uh, and in most systems, they do. They give you a list of things you've trusted and, and give you the chance to revoke yeah. it. And what's great about this article is I think that it opens up these things and Apple will have, you know, a couple updates to start, you know, working on, you know, closing that stuff off or really have to come up and explain why they're not. It's really important. Like, and one of the th things I worry about is that security is so hard to explain uh, to normal people is that in order for these attacks to work, it, to, to get the keychain, uh, sorry, to get the pairing record, someone has to take your computer. A government agency or a, a malicious attacker has to take your computer and, to get to them. They have to take your device if they want to use a juice jack, which is a maliciously controlled accessory to sort of generate their own pairing keys. There's a lot of steps that have to be done to get to these. Well, this is not... 
Yeah, he says in his in his own statement that Apple has done a lot to prevent the typical kinds of attacks, which is what Steve was addressing in the iOS 7 document yes. was addressing, is that it is incredibly hardened against uh, typical kinds of attacks. These are very specific types of attacks that he's exposed. Well, and, and, and like Alex, I think he should. They, the Apple needs to fix these. Yeah, he well, raises a good question. He says, why is, this, is what was clearly designed to be secure, uh, why is it being compromised by Apple intentionally? What's the point? Well, and what's interesting is that I, there, I know several large companies that have a policy of if you walk into the airport and TSA takes your um, computer to away, you know, out of your site, or like puts it. or or put, no puts anything into it, you just leave them with the computer. Like right. literally, you just you know the, the comp companies say we'll we'll, we'll replace We're not your computer. Use it anymore because we no, no it's done. It's like it's it, it's like it, as soon as TSA walks away with your computer, you're no longer allowed to take it back. You know, and so you what they need these the people that I know will upload everything to the cloud. I don't know if that yeah. makes it any better anymore. <laughs> but but they'll save it all off. Um, you know, before they get on the flight. So when they come in through customs, they don't have to, they know that they could walk away from that computer at any moment. And you're, so you're going to write up, Renee, how to use the Apple uh, configurator, configurator. We did it yesterday. Okay. So there's an article on the iMore site. Because yeah. if you really don't want this, for instance, this pairing to happen, there's a way to, to disable that, but you have to download the free Apple configurator. Yeah. And there's also ways you can make pa uh, the lock screen safer. Like you can turn off Siri, you can turn off Control Center, you can turn off uh, Notification Center, you can turn off Passbook. You can do a lot of things to make your yourself less vulnerable to any kind of attack. Yeah. Um, I think, though, the, he, I think Z Z Zyarsky raises some interesting questions. Steve will talk about this uh, right after this show on security now. Get your propeller hats out. It usually gets pretty uh, <laughs> thick, but... Uh, it's if you want, you know, this is the problem, of course, and you you raise this, Renee, that um, the the mainstream media takeaway headline is <laughs> Apple devices insecure, Apple cooperating with the feds, but it's obviously more complex than that. Right? Yeah, I'll put the article in the chat room just if people are. Thank you, about it. thank you. All right, we appreciate it. Um, we're going to do a question uh, thing, right? The question engine. Are so you ready? Give us the, well, give us the URL. Uh, the URL is um, it's just Bitly. Uh, no, you got to use Twit dot two. I don't know how to. I don't know how to sign in for that. We got to get that set up. Yeah, I, I don't even know how to. I'm happy sign to give in. it to you. Only I don't Patrick know how to sign Delahanty in. Patrick Delahanty knows how to do yeah. that. <laughs> That's the problem. Bit dot ly slash mbw dash four twelve. Mbw dash four twelve because this is episode four twelve. We've got lots of questions. So um, already we'll come we need in to give it out. People just guessed it. I tweeted it. Oh, you tweeted it. And then I put it in the in the for, in the so, chat room. Uh, we're, we'll take a break. We'll take some questions. Uh, but uh, if you have a question, or if you go to the question engine, you can vote up the question. Because a lot of times, it's the best thing to do is vote up the questions. Vote up the questions. Like. Most of the questions by now have probably been asked. Uh, again, bit.ly slash mbw dash four one two. We'll go to our question engine in uh, just a moment. Our show today uh, brought to you by Squarespace. Alex Lindsay is kind of the the poster boy for Squarespace. I love Squarespace. Yeah. He used to go into he used to go into restaurants. Restaurant. Say, where's your website? I don't have a website. Mm. And now you do. Yeah, I mean, like I'd, I'd make one while I was having the food. Because what you could do, one of the things you could do with Squarespace. So Squarespace is hosting and software. So it's everything you need to create a, a really great website. Whether it's a personal site, a business site, because they have e-commerce on every single template. Uh, maybe a, a photography portfolio, an art portfolio. Uh, newborn baby site. There's lots of, you know, website, right? Website could be anything. Uh, but it's the hosting and the software, everything you need. But one of the things they do that no one else does that I know of is you go to squarespace.com and click the get started button without giving them a credit card or really any personal information uh, except your email address. You can start a site, create it for two weeks free. That's the hook. So what you do is you, you go in there and you just set, set up a here's, site. Here's your thing. And what you do, you give them the, the login and the yeah, password. Yeah, I, I just create a new login. I just created it. If you like it, then keep it. If, if, if you like it, though, I do usually require a free meal. <laughs> <laughs> when I come back, I want a sandwich. Yeah. Uh, really nice. And, well, you could do it as a, a wedding gift, a baby gift. Wouldn't that be great if you know a little bit? And by the way, you don't have to be a CSS or JavaScript or HTML It's all WYSIWYG. Guru. It's all WYSIWYG. Drag and drop, point and click. You can add little widgets that give uh, that you know, bring in your social media, connect everything together. Video. And the big thing is, is you don't have to figure out also how to figure out how to make it work on an iPad and Android and no, iPhone. Like all of that stuff, you just throw your stuff in and it's all going to reformat as, as needed. With Squarespace the new space guys, uh, gals are very, very sophisticated. And so, in fact, one of the reasons it took them so long to do this current versions, when it came out version six, it was, uh, I think, two years in the making, is they wanted to make sure that Without your having to worry about it, it did everything modern, mobile responsive design. So no no special mobile site. It's your site looks good no matter what size screen. When you upload a picture, for instance, 
automatically in the background they make nine different versions of that picture in every possible size. So, you know, you, it's all it's all done for you. E-commerce is built in. Um, in fact, even the least expensive site in Squarespace can buy or you can sell one thing, which would be great for donations, charity, um, you know, a school fun drive. Uh, I just think Squarespace is great. I want you to try it. So please visit squarespace.com uh, and uh, and just press the get started button. If you need help, even during the free trial, they have the best support in the world 24-7 right from the Squarespace offices. I saw that they're opening now uh, uh, support offices in Dublin and Portland, Oregon, so they have cover a bit more time zones, which is great. It is 24-7. Um, there's a great customer help site with webinars, self-help articles, video workshops. So it's very easy. Even if you, you, know, you, you stumble and say, well, how do I do this? No trouble getting that information. And we just built a, a training, actually a training module in Squarespace and for, for one of our clients. And it was just great because, and, and there was a little, some little issues that we had with translations and we're talking to the head, you know, the, the you know, just kept on going up. They're, they're really committed to trying to figure out exactly how to fix whatever, whatever problems those, those happen it's to be, a, but it's, it's, it's great. It's a great product. Squarespace.com. Now, if you want to sign up, if you want to buy it, um, tell the restaurant this, use the offer code MacBreak and we'll get you 10% off on your uh, new yes. account. So, uh, but you don't need that to do the trial. Just when you check out to when you buy it. MacBreak is the offer code at squarespace.com. Really great guys with a, with a product. Uh, I'm just very proud to be associated with. Really neat. All right. Question time. From, oh, no. Oh, no. I suppose I could. You could sign in if you want. Yeah, but, no, you know, I, I don't have the password on here. I haven't put LastPass on it yet. I'll right. jump into the iPad view <laughs> so we can see it in big. Here are six Windows 8.1 tips for maximum performance reliability. <laughs> For tip one, throw your computer into the canal. Get a Mac. <laughs> yeah, just the worst piece. Of iOS eight, five, eight of four has a built-in tip app now. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Um, what is that? How is that going to work? A new tip a day or something? It, it says there's going to be new ones. There, I think there's six or eight right now, and you tap on it. It has a little bit of animation and tells you what's happening, and you can look at a whole list of them as well. That's kind of a strange app. It's not Mayday, but I mean, maybe it's helpful to some people. Yeah. It's fun. That iOS 8 beta 4 came out yesterday, day before? Yep. Yeah. Anything else new and exciting? Uh, a control center looks nice. I mean, they've, they've made it a little bit easier to see. It's, they're just doing a lot of little improvements. Health, health got a little bit of improvements. It's steadily, it's steadily getting there, Leo. We're about halfway there. By the way, Bill Campbell retired. I didn't realize this. Boy, Coach has been there forever. Yeah. Practically since the Waz and Jobs days. Long time. 17-year Apple board member retiring. Uh, Sue Wagner will replace him. She's a director at BlackRock. With M&A Black experience. BlackRock. <laughs> well, see, so it could be M&A preparing Apple for sale, unlikely. Or <laughs> Who could buy Apple? That's an interesting really. question. Who could yeah, exactly. buy? Nobody could buy The Apple. government. I don't even think Salt the government could afford Apple. <laughs> I don't even think so. Hey, we're printing money at $80 billion a month. We can just yeah. print some more. Yeah. Actually, North America is printing U.S. currency, too, so maybe they could buy it. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Every every time there's like a major redesign to the hundred dollar bill, it's usually in response to okay. So we we found out that another country has basically bought the the, the stuff that's required to manufacture hundred dollar bills now. So okay, guess what? We're putting mascara on Ben Franklin this time. <laughs> Use adamantium. Adamantium. <laughs> Question one. This is from Boston Squirrel. Boston Squirrel. He asks, uh, when will we see an Apple 4K monitor? Not likely, buddy boy. I don't know. Eventually. October. Ah, that would be a good Maybe. time. Yeah, that's my guess. That's the next Mac event. But why do, why not, why, I mean, uh, it's built into 10.9 mm -hmm. as of 10.93. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, I have a 4K monitor. I have the uh, uh, LG. What is, what do I have? No, I have the Q1, two, Q321. I don't even remember who makes it, but it's, that's the point. I right? still like my big theory that they're just going to take Apple TV and incorporate it into a 4K monitor that you use for your iMac or whatever, but you could just yeah. have it all. You should incorporate in. it into the Mac as well. Just put it straight into OS X. Yeah. You know how I like using my 4K? It's a 31 and a half inch monitor. How's that working for it's you? It's an Asus. Is it nice? Uh, it's beautiful, but you know, I don't use it at 4K. I use it at uh, one half, 1920 by 1080. Uh, so everything's nice and big. Right. You come in here, you go, what are you, an old man? I go, yep. <laughs> <laughs> everything's yeah. nice and big. But if I do but, photo editing or watch a video, mm -hmm. it's dot for dot. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that that's that high DPI mode that uh, Apple's really good at. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, I've, that's I've, what you want. That's the support. Yeah, I've, 
I, I do know people who have like really, really big, like prestige 4K screens in their office that, that they're using as a as a as a screen for their computers, uh, for their for their Mac Pro, and it works great if you do have a big, big, big screen. It becomes this is this picture window that right. faces your desk that uh, you can basically turn into four different monitors because of how big you can make these windows. Uh, I just don't. Every time that I've seen a setup that has like a 31 inch display on it. It's like you said, Leo, it's you. It's great demo, but at some point around the first 45 minutes of a full workday, you say that I can't, I don't have, I'm not, I don't have superhuman sight. I can't appreciate from a distance of 18 inches or 24 inches away how nice this display is. I want things to be bigger and easier to see. Yeah. So, yeah, well, so it's bigger I, I don't, and easier I don't know to see. Apple, I have two yeah, 27s I, and a 31. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh. I just, I just don't. I, I see. I see Apple doing a doing a 4K display if they figure they can do it better than anybody else, or if they can make a bigger markup, a bigger profit than anybody else can. But I think it. some at some point the they have to. The argument is true. that they're leaving um, money on the table. That's the only. Well, argument. but I, and I also think though that you, it's it's just weird to not be making their own monitors for their own computers. That's just, yeah. It's just weird. Well, they make Thunderbolt. They just don't make 4K yet. It's just weird. So answer the question from Bassett Square. Oh, when are we going to see a 4K computer? I mean, October. Monitor. October. Anybody else? October, I think, is the next likely time. Yeah. I don't think Apple wants to. I think if Apple does it, they're not going to do an announcement. They'll just slip it. Because. The press release. Yeah, because uh, it's too small a market. You don't want to emphasize in any way, because it's going to cost $3,000. You don't want to emphasize in any way how expensive your stuff is. But it's the Mac Pro, Leo. It's that supercar. It's the thing that makes Apple cool and sexy. They're going to talk about it. They're going to do a little movie about how it was constructed by robots. Yeah. On no, Mars. Costs, I think you want to focus in your very few, very precious events on the iPad, the big sellers, the, the iPad, watch. the iPhone, the watch. Mm -hmm. You got enough to say there. Mm -hmm. You don't want to talk about 4K displays. It's no, just too it's much just verbiage. Too small of a market. It's a tiny Next market. Up, it's computers, trucks. Next WWDC. Yep. I, right. More to the point, when are they going to update the mini? And that was one of the questions, but it, it, oh, it fell sorry. off. It fell off the thing. It fell well, off the thing. I, you know, see, nobody cares. Just you and me. <sighs> I have so many minis, and I love them. Thank you, Boston right. Squirrel. Question two. Question. Uh, next question. Do you think the Sam... This is from Franklin Wester... Wester Gonchin. Wester Gonchin. That's a really good... Milwaukee. I love that name. At least from Milwaukee. Do you think the Samsung ads are working against Apple or just helping to raise the brand awareness of the iPhone, iPad, iPad mini, Retina, Mac Pro, Mac Pro, Mac... Pro, MacBook Pro, things. Mac Pro, late 2013. I got to tell you, uh, on the radio show, so I always use this as the example of the unwashed masses. They talk about, there is no Android device. There's Samsung and there's iPhone. Samsung's marketing has done at least that. It has be, and I keep telling well, you, I, don't get a Samsung phone. They're crap. The only reason you want a Samsung phone is because they spend hundreds of millions of dollars advertising it to you. Billions. Right. Billions. Billions. Yeah. I've not been. I've hired. I've um, bought a couple Samsung phones now, and I'm kind of done. They were great. I mean, my Galaxy S2, I loved the uh, Galaxy Nexus, loved. Mm -hmm. But after the the S4, uh, never again. I mean, it just in the S5. I don't like the plastic. They've junked it's it up. They're plasticky. They have way too much touch whiz. Just yeah, there's like things you can do in touch whiz you can't do in Google, so it's an inconsistent user experience. Right. I like the HTC is much better. Yeah. I like the Motorola is much better. Pure is better. Well, I still think we're going to end up with this big tug of war between. I mean, Samsung, I think, I think is determined to move away from Android. I think they're doing it slowly, but I think that that's. I think it's a tug of war because Google's not doesn't want them to. And well, it becomes very complicated if, if, if a company to. that big moves away. Right. It's complicated for the platform. They have so. Tizen though; it's in their back pocket. So, exactly. and, uh, so yeah, I often when people call, I say, "Well, have you looked at the HTC One? This is so much better than a Samsung mm -hmm. phone, but uh, and it's the same price." That's the M8. The M8. Uh, I've never heard of it. They, not necessarily. I mean, there's uh, there. Uh, I, I agree that the, the the hand feel of a of a Samsung phone isn't as good as what you get from HTC, and certainly not what you get from Apple. Uh, but they're 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 doing some nice things for the platform. It's it's nice to have a really good solid weatherproof phone that costs no more than uh, than a cheap phone that you can't drop in, drop into a toilet or into a beach. Uh, they I agree that a lot of the things they're doing with TouchWiz are kind of weird, but some of them are very nice. They're also doing some things with split screen that to me points the way to wow, this is incredibly useful. Now that I have the ability 
ability to be doing something boring like clearing out the 200, 300 emails in my inbox while I'm waiting for it to be picked up, but I can still watch a YouTube video in a pane above that is really nice, especially on the uh, Note 7, uh, on, on the new Note tab tablet, the ability to, again, do that sort of split screen, screen one ta one panel for productivity, another panel for uh, to keep a, a track of communications. So it's not, it's not as dire as all that. But they certainly have a way to go to be the superlative of anything. Uh, I'm also not 100% sure that they will ever uh, move towards Tizen as an operating system because they give up so much uh, in order to not just uh, if they stop using Android, they give Google up so services. much. They don't they, they don't want they don't want to be known as a Google phone, but they definitely want people to have Google apps on them. And that's going to well, be I think that they give up. I, I don't think I think that that's a five year curve. I don't think it's something they do in, in a year, but I think that right. that well, in, fi in five years, may, Apple might, might stop doing iOS. They might have decided <laughs> to do something more impressive than that. So that's right. Five years might be five. Might, might We might not be walking upright we might be just undulating <laughs> uh, modules of light as human beings in, in five years but to leo's point i mean samsung really does believe that awareness creates sales and they will spend as much and again you know they are a korean conglomerate they make oil rigs they have as much money as yeah. their country needs they to make rice in. cookers they make fridges they make everything everything yeah and they can spend as much money as they want like now they're making money mobile but they didn't for a while and they unlike other companies like blackberry and palm and htc who can't take those kind of losses samsung could take as much loss as they want and they were willing to do that to buy awareness and now so many people just think of Android as Samsung. That's really that true. It delivers huge benefits for them. Yep. And yet there are going to be some great Android phones, the Motorola mm -hmm. X Plus One. Mm -hmm. We've got an Oppo uh, One Plus One here, uh, the Oppo Find 7. There's some really Xiaomi. good phones out there. Xiaomi, yeah. Um, but they don't exist. It's really an iPhone Samsung world, especially <laughs> in the U.S. Question, thank you for the uh, question, Franklin. Question three. Next question is... From Jeffrey Jameson from Chilliwack. Chilliwack! What are you most excited about in Yosemite? Do you know where Chilliwack is? I don't know where Chilliwack British is. British Columbia. Interesting. Yes. More Canadianisms. Love the Canadians. Con we Con brought him in with the with the movie before the show. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, what, what are you most excited about in Yosemite? For, for me, it's continuity. It's just this ability to have one seamless experience between all these devices. That's really all I've ever wanted. I mean, the fact that I, I, I switched the, I switched to Chrome from Safari for a couple of reasons, but the majority of it is that really just because if I'm using Chrome on every single one of my mobile devices, all of the work that I do through browsing becomes one single experience. There's no syncing. There's no copying anything. There's no uh, giving permissions to anything. It just all exists. So I think that once uh, we're in a full iOS 8 and Yosemite world, there will be fewer times when I even feel the desire to take my MacBook out of the office, even if even if it's just for two or three hours, because the ability to right, right now one of the one of the hangups continues to be just getting data, uh, app data from one to another uh, by between the iPad and the, and my MacBook and. It's not that it's really difficult. It's just that it's one step on my MacBook. I simply close the lid, put it in the bag, and leave. But the day that I can just simply, by virtue of the fact that the iPad is in the same room as, or the same network even as this Mac, and it knows that, oh, you're working on this document. Well, I have also synced this document, and I have a version of this app for iOS. I can just pick up right where you left off, including here's where your editing cursor was at the point at which you decided to leave the house. That's going to be, uh, you, you like little changes that make things easier, but they're very rarely that an operating system upgrade changes the way that you work with something. And that will change the way that I work with, uh, with these devices. I like the new Siri and the new system spotlight fine thing. Yep. The, 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 so I don't need to put Quicksilver on there. Andy doesn't use Quicksilver, so. But I like that kind of stuff. I do. I, I'm afraid I'm going to go with Andy. I use so many different devices. Like, for instance, like my texting is all done with Hangouts now because no matter what computer I'm on, no matter what device I'm on, I, I have the same conversation going on. You know, whether it's an Android phone or an iPhone or, a, or whatever, whatever country I'm in, I just pick, pick up whatever I'm doing Continuity, and I keep on going. Continuity, to be fair, is not going over to the other side. It's no, no, only I, uh, iOS. I understand. But what I'm saying, as an example, though, of continuity is, yeah. is, is that... Um, That's true, though. Messages does the same thing, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the reason I don't use messages, I mean, this is the problem. The reason I don't use messages is because it doesn't work on my Android right. phones. So I think, right. but I think that the, um, uh, but I think that it is a, that being able to do that is going to have me actually use my iPad more. I mean, I feel like I, I love the iPad and everything else, but I think my parents use their iPads far more than I use mine mm -hmm. just because I'm just, I'm too old and I know I, <laughs> like, like I just feel like I need my keyboard and. Um, and so I think that, but being able to just do some of the little stuff and know that I can come right back, I think that's a, it's going to be important. So two for continuity. What do you think, Renee? 
Well, because Alex and Andy already sung the praise of the continuity, I'm going to go with extensibility. And I think on, on iOS, oh, yes. it's, it's inarguably the biggest advance Huge. since the App Store, but on okay, OS well, 10... We're, we're, we're talking about Yosemite, it, not iOS. Yeah, yeah, on OS I, 10, I, though, I, I think I, there's, I, yeah. there's a sorry, lot of benefit, I, I, too. I, why? Uh, there, but saying, for, the for, extensions for, for are for not on, on, on Yosemite, yeah, so are they? They are on Yosemite. So oh. Yosemite is getting the uh, Today View widget. So you'll be able to do a lot of things in the widgets, which are very interesting. They're getting um, iCloud Drive, and it's going to be shown to you actually in an iCloud Drive. But because there are storage provider extensions, if you don't want to use iCloud Drive, you can use uh, Dropbox in there. You oh. can use OneDrive in there. You can use Google Drive in there. You can Apple's giving them, as far as I can tell, as much access and, and the same kind of access as iCloud. And again, maybe that's because IBM wants to be able to put enterprise data stores in there, but whatever, yes. I benefit. That's great. I did not know that they had. I didn't really see Wait. that highlighted. That, that I've been writing about extensibility all, all for oh, the last two weeks. It's, it's making me so happy. Uh, also, action extensions. So well, there's both sharing and action, but action extensions means that you'll be able to do things like markdown in mail. Markdown, sorry, markup isn't just in mail. That extension can run anywhere in OS 10, so you can do markup in any app, but you can also, for example, the new Photos app won't have everything that Aperture has, but it, it, it'll it conclude support for the Photos extension, so people can make all these plugins for it that could conceivably do whole scads of productivity in, in the photo context for us. And sharing extensions means that things like Instagram and things like um, Pinterest, whatever you like, can be an equal citizen with the Apple partners like Twitter and Facebook. So I think it's, gonna, it's again, it's like it's not as apparent as continuity, but I think the level of power that we'll be able to get out of it is going to be really it's impressive. It's not the first time Apple's tried this. Remember services? Yes. Those are buried, though. These are front and center. I mean, but but that's the point is that these right. capabilities are. This is not new. It's just uh, and it wasn't widely used. I loved. I was very high on services. I used to, we used to, we used a lot of services. Yeah, but uh, nobody ever. And they're still there, I guess. But nobody ever really. And it's used. better for anyone because Dropbox previously had to hack their way into OS X. Now that there's an extension right for the Finder, you know, there's an Apple approved way to do that functionality. Yeah. Um, and yeah, again, it's not. A, it's it, it, iOS is getting all the attention for this, but I think it's ju it's just as valuable. Maybe not just valuable, but still still super valuable in OS X. Well, it's. I, I think that I, I agree. If if the question were about iOS 8, iOS eight and Yosemite, I would certainly have uh, chosen extensions because it's not in 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 uh, in uh, Mac OS. It adds functionality. It's an improved way of doing something that we've seen happen on uh, Mac before. On iOS, it's sort of like well. There's this car called the Pinto. It's a great car <laughs> unless someone rear ends you, in which case you will explode and die. To me, the lack of extensibility in iOS is the <laughs> exploding and die aspect feature. And they've said, well, tell you what, what if we said that we, we, we heard you, we understand that you don't want your, your children to explode and die uh, in, a, in a low level uh, low level accident. What if we were to give you this thing that's been a really valuable part of every other phone experience for the past two or three years and how you can do it too. That's a, it's another one of those this is almost like an entirely new phone for with for me by virtue of the fact that now I have uh, extensibility and the ability for apps to talk to each other. So, yeah, I agree about continuity. I just wanted to give extensibility a little bit of love. Yeah, exactly. yeah. good. Well, and you opened my eyes to it. Although, no, well, it's not, not necessarily Yosemite. Guess, like Andy said and I've said, it's not the first time we've seen this attempted. Well, and while it's not necessarily a Yosemite thing, I, I, I think Swift is going to be. A, I think this is the beginning the programming of programming language. Well, I think it's going to be. Sure much bigger over the next couple of years. I think that we're going to see it's a lot. It's OS 10 too. Perfectly reasonable. Yep. yep. All right. Thank you, uh, Jeffrey, for that one. Uh, more questions? More questions. Here we go. Um, Felicity. Uh, Megamon. Megamon from She's, Chicago. She sounds like a action figure. <laughs> Megamon. Megerman. Megerman. Uh, there's no way that Apple can't be thinking about acquiring a tech company that also is involved heavily in coffee, right? <laughs> <laughs> what would that be? Yeah, blue, blue hmm. bottle. Apple's thinking about buying Blue Bottle. No, it, it would be great if just it's a good know, rumor. Every, every Apple that. store had a Blue Starbucks. Bottle. Starbucks. Let's no, not Starbucks. Sight glass no, every or Blue Apple Bottle. Every Apple store needs a Blue Bottle. Every Apple store needs a Blue Bottle. <laughs> wow, I like that. What other tech companies are heavily involved in coffee? I don't know. Well, there was another question earlier on that that was uh, was also about Apple partnering up with Starbucks. I think that was the. Is there a rumor going around? I don't know. It was two different questions. Hmm. Uh, anyway, so we'll thank you. All, right. All right, next question. Buy a lot of companies. Go ahead. Next question here is from uh, Craig Sheltra from Charlotte, North Carolina. I was there two days ago. Hello, Charlotte. Um, will Apple uh, fi uh, finally get uh, the cloud right with iOS 8 and Cloud Drive? Well, that's a big question. 
Yeah. People Definitely seem right. more. All of us are just like people mm, seem very well. positive about this one, though. Mm, it's not they, Cloud Drive, though. It's Cloud. Like the exciting thing is Cloud Kit yeah. because Cloud Drive is based on it. The new photo system is based on it. From what I've talked to developers about, it is a much more. It's, it's a much simpler solution. You basically store key values or blobs there. Uh, it's built on the back end of of uh, Microsoft Azure, and I think there might be some Amazon stuff behind it too. But it's it it looks really solid. People seem to like it. <laughs> Whether they'll fly back to it after being burned with iCloud before is a big question. But I think it's a huge step in the right direction. All right. Thank you for all your questions. Thank you for the question engine. Yep. We love. Uh, we only do That's it when uh, Alex is here because he has the keys to the kingdom. I can give you those keys. You guys can have the keys anytime. I like doing it. It's fun. We were talking about Samsung and all the money they spend on advertising, but Apple does some pretty fair ads. I thought this one, I haven't seen a Mac ad in ages. Yeah. I thought this yeah. one was a really nice ad, especially. was the last one. Which one? 2012, the Retina MacBook Pro was it's the last one. It's been that long? I believe so, yeah. This one was a real tip of the hat to the cult of Mac. Watch. <laughs> They're showing the backs of uh, MacBooks and all the decals. Things people do with their little Apple. I just wonder about all the clearances they had to get for Can all these imagine? copyrighted yeah, characters. Yeah, they got Hello Kitty and Homer Simpson. And well, I, no Wonder. I noticed that I noticed that they had a run of DC Comics characters, no Marvel Comics characters. Ah, yeah. Disney made like at least three three appearances. So there's no uh, text. So those of you listening didn't just heard music, but it said the Notebook people love the MacBook Air, and the whole point of it was how people have customized their MacBook Airs with stickers, which everybody does. Yep. That music makes you want to crump. <laughs> Yeah, I prefer. I prefer a big, a big. Uh, I don't. I prefer Look not at all your stickers. So you just throw stuff. Google, on there. Chrome, and Android. But then there's also Red, Twit, Pixel Core. My Pixel Core is falling apart. But no, yeah. That but I kind of like it. You think? You, you think they waited until Johnny I was on vacation and yeah. out of the building before they filmed that? <laughs> You've yeah. ruined the most beautiful computer I've ever made. It was aluminium, and you ruined it. You ruined it. it. Oh. We've yes, solved the problem of decorating computers by making a laptop that was so beautiful, nobody would ever want to put anything on it. We, <laughs> we anticipate that the se secondary market for stickers will dry up within two months. You're welcome. <laughs> We're sorry, Johnny. We're so, so sorry, Johnny. Do you, uh, you guys uh, have stickers? Out? Do you, what do you do, Renee? You have a sticker on your MacBook? I, I, well, I don't have any Twit stickers, which is one of the reasons. But we I can, do not uh, have we any. can do that. We can fix that. We'll send you some. That'd be awesome. But I don't. I don't currently have any stickers on my MacBook. I'm. I'm always looking. Maybe a nice Iron Man or. or I got tired of peeling them off. That's why I added this uh, spec. That's what thing. I do. I put a shell on the. And then you add a stickers. stickers. That's a great idea. It's really nice to have yeah. a clean MacBook when you take the shell off. Then it's like brand new. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. I, I have a shell on mine, and mostly, mostly so that during baggage, uh, during uh, TSA screenings, I know yeah. that this is my notebook. Please, nobody take mine. They do all look. I the wonder. Same. I wonder though. Does it? Does I wonder who was the first person to come up with the Snow White sticker? Because that was. She's holding brilliant. the Apple logo. Hold, hold, holding, hold, holding the Apple. And someone had to be the first person to think of that and produce that sticker. And whoever it is, he's not up there with the, 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 the guy who designed the Rubik's Cube. But, man, they deserve some sort of a design award. Cause that's I have just to genius. think it's Jealous Skins, right? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. There was Jealous Skins. There was the Music Skins who did all the Beatles stuff. There was... But for a long time, a Jealous Skins was really Etsy all Etsy just stuff. whole... They really, they really do the whole... This. Yeah. And they I found were... most of them on, on Etsy. They were the ones who uh, hired real artists to do the Jell-O skins. I saw them first at Macworld. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of Jell-O skins. Me too. They're awesome. Really gorgeous. The uh, uh, OMG Craft logo on the back of my computer is a Jell-O skin. Is, so you could have custom. Yeah. It's amazing. Now, I want to... We had... Uh, um, on the twit on Sunday, we had Ben Thompson from Stratechery. He used to work for WordPress.com. I'm, I'm sorry, for Automatic. Matt Mullenweg's uh, company that create that supports WordPress.com. And he said everybody who works at WordPress.com gets a custom MacBook, uh, sh you know, aluminum uh, shell. But instead of the Apple, it's a W. They'd literally replace the Apple. Wow. It's the WordPress W. And somebody sent me a link. There's a company uh, that does this that will make a um, an Apple, uh, like a MacBook um, metal, you know, I guess, I don't know how hard it is to replace the metal on there, but... Uh, does anybody in the chat room remember where that was? It's a Batman logo right there. Wouldn't that be cool? I'm thinking maybe we could get some twit ones cut out. Yeah. You know? Um, or maple leaf teapots. Or maple leaf teapots. Hey, it's time for our tips of the week. We'll see if I I'll see if I can find that before uh 
before the end of the show. Uh, let's start uh, with you, Renee Ritchie. Your turn to kick things off. I have two this week because there were two really interesting apps that were released. The first one is Overcast, which is a podcast client by Marco Armont, who people might know from Instapaper and from the magazine. And uh, podcast clients, you know, people are listening to podcasts right now. So obviously, you know, a lot of people like podcasts. They've become a really interesting category because so many really good designers and developers are making them. And they're not monotonous at all. Everyone has a very different idea about what's important, how opinionated you should be versus, you know, how flexible you should be, how many options you should have. And over Overcast is definitely opinionated. You know, Mark Oman has a very specific sensibility and he wants a very specific experience, but it's flexible where it needs to be. It's a really well done, well designed app. He wrote his, his own audio engine using core audio. He didn't want to use the built-in AV foundation stuff. It does really smart things like it has a smart speed. So it'll automatically adjust the speed of the recording depending on how fast the host speaks and how many pauses they have between their words. And it, it shows you how much time you've saved when you've used it. They could say it wow. saved you 10 minutes, 20 minutes. 30 minutes. It also does an audio boost. So if, if people have different volumes or if the volume is low, it boosts it up for you. And I've had podcasts that for some reason, one person was louder, one person, you know, wasn't, uh, or, or it was just in generally not loud enough. So it does a lot of really clever things. There are a couple drawbacks still. It is a 1.0. There's no support for video podcasts yet. There's also no support for streaming. So you have to download stuff that you want. But it's got a lot of really, really clever features uh, built into it. I was on the beta, so I've been using it for over a month now, and I'm currently using it as my main podcast client. Very happy with it. It's worth a look. And the second one is Hours, which is by Tappity Apps, uh, which is Jeremy Olson. And this is a time tra uh, tracking app. And, you know, there's a lot of those as well, but he's been working, I think, two or three years on this. And he had very specific ideas, and he put it together very, very well. Um, it's it's received a lot of attention. You know, he's not as well-known a developer as someone like Marco Armand, but he's a really attentive developer. And he built this sort of to scratch his own itch, which is what a lot of developers do. But if you are in any sort of time tracking, and people immediately joke, you know, uh, lawyers bill in six-minute intervals. You may not want to bill in six-minute intervals, but you might be doing consulting work, you might be doing client work, and he makes it as easy as possible for you to keep track of those billable hours. Uh, and again, it's really, really well designed. So um, I wanted to make sure both of those got mentioned. Great, Renee. Thank you. Yeah, I've really been spending a lot of energy, uh, we all have at Twit, thinking about how people listen to our shows. Mm -hmm. It's pretty obvious that no one listens to shows by subscribing them <laughs> into them in iTunes, hooking up their iPod to the iTunes, right. syncing, That's kind of downloading. Over. John Syracuse the... still does, but I think he's the only one. It does he really? Because it seems... Yeah, iPod shuffle. <laughs> it seems really uh, old school. And of course, that's how we built our business. Uh, the podcast app on iOS and the uh, various apps uh, on other platforms seem to be important. Our own apps, of course, are important. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mention that. Uh, the po Because Apple's podcast app is free and it's the most popular app, Armand made his app free too. So you get the Yay. entire app is free. There's some features that you need to pay. Like you get, I think you get the smart speed and smart uh, audio and smart sound for 10 minutes for free. There's a $5 in-app purchase if you want to unlock all the other features. Yay. Thank you, Marco, for doing that. Uh, chat room tells me that the uh, place to go if you want to get your MacBook cover customized the actual aluminum cut out is called uncover at uncovermac.com and uh i don't know how hard this must be but they have some really cool <laughs> logos i don't know what install how much is it um uh, i don't remember them being like around 100 something i wish i could figure out how to point and click on this computer uh, <laughs> i'm sure there's a way to do it Wow. I like I like that a lot of these designs we're seeing. They're sort of like when someone has a bad tattoo from their youth and they try to get a cover up yeah. that has to sort of incorporate the ink in it without making it look like this is the Three Dog Night tattoo. <laughs> and so you've got you've got some that are like incorporating the logo by sort of incorporating some of the contours without making it look. <laughs> oh, they're a little more expensive. They're three hundred ninety nine euros for a circle. If you want a custom, it's six hundred euros. Oh, to buy an iWatch for that. Yeah, that's kind of that's uh, that's pretty pricey. It's almost a thousand bucks. Never mind. I presume you have to send them your Mac. It's just one Alex. Come on, <laughs> just an Alex. <laughs> just an Alex. If you're like a band though, or like a DJ, yeah. you know, if you're, you're going to be out there in front of a lot of people, yeah. it makes sense. I want one. I want a Twit one. Yeah. You want, if you want to trick venture capitalists into thinking that you've developed your own computer laptop yeah, design that's exactly. as good as Apple's, yeah. that's cheap money. I invented it. Alex Lindsay, what do you got for us? So we've been doing MacBreak for a long time. 
We certainly have. <laughs> and back in the early days, in fact, episode number one, we had a different, well, not a different set of hosts. We're still here. We had Amber and Emery Wells. Yes. Emery has come out with a new piece of software, oh. a new new web service. I love you, Emery. Yes. <laughs> and um, I've been starting to play with it. It's really cool. So this is, um, all right, it, it's, you can, you can get notified when it's more publicly available, but it's called Frame.io, and it's really for people who are professionals. I mean, people who are, if you're working on uh, sending you know, putting up files and having them reviewed and having people able to draw on them and say, change this and move this around and really taking care of all of those things as a, as a production company. Um, this is a way to manage all of that, um, really effectively. So it's really, and, and it's the, it's the best one that I've seen so far. <laughs> so, so if you're interested in this, if this is something that's been driving you crazy, collaborative, um, you know, creative development, um, it's a pretty, pretty slick, uh, system that's, um, that he's rolling out. So I would highly suggest, uh, at least signing up for the, uh, it's, vi up to it's video sharing, it's video sharing, but it's also video commenting. So, and, and, and specifically within a creative community. So if you're not a creative community, but like I'm a team, I'm a producer and someone's uploading stuff and I'm marking it up and saying, we need to change this and we need to move this around and we, you know, and it's, and it's going to play back and it's frame.io. Someone's asking in the, in the chat room. Um, and, uh, uh, and it's a really, um, so you can see how you can annotate stuff and, and comment on it and so on and so forth. So if you're, a, and keeps track of, you know, versions and all those things. And Emery's done a lot of production. I mean, he still does a lot of production. So this is really not driven by someone who thought this was a good idea, but this is someone who actually does this every day. And, um, you know, you can see kind of how that's done. But I would highly suggest um, getting on the list now before everyone else hears about it. I, I just said it. So if you're listening to it live, do it now before everyone else listens to the show, but, um, but I would definitely get on the list because I think this is going to be something that a lot of people are going to enjoy using. So anyway, frame.io. Frameio. Now the uh, chat room is saying that another company called Colorware <laughs> is the company that did the WordPress mm. uh, logo. How much is that smartphones too. Yeah. And they're less, uh, less expensive. Ooh, they kind of show you a little bit of... They show you how they do it. Yeah. They do take off the cover. First, the entire laptop is disassembled and That's put the in the kit. The lid of the laptop is taken to the colorware machine shop, where it will never be seen from or heard from again. <laughs> then the basic shape of the new logo is machined from the laptop lid. The opening is where the new logo will be placed. Well, Alex's friends can't even leave them at TSA. Imagine this. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So there's actually the WordPress. That is pretty sweet. I wouldn't mind that with a little twit thing there. Maybe when Apple comes out with a new laptop, I'll spring for I'm that. I'm so tempted. The Retina MacBook Air Leo. How much is this one? Does it, did they tell you how much it costs? Uh, if you have to ask, exactly. you can't afford it. Products? Uh, so, Charum did say it was less expensive. I don't know. Colorware, C-O-L-O-R-W-A-R-E. Your pick of the week, Mr. Nick. I'm not, oh. Mine is the sort of game I really like. I'm sorry, but my cable will not let me broadcast this to the uh, thing behind me. This is it's a game called F-Sim Space Shuttle. All it is is a space shuttle landing simulator. Oh, I love that. Where this is a replay of my last attempt to land the shuttle. It gives you, it uses, of course, all the tilt and motion sensors uh, to do your final approach. Uh, there's also, hang on, let me change the camera view. There are also a lot of different views available because the graphics on this are just amazing. It really does look like uh, photorealism, depending on what camera angle you take. Uh, so you're obviously you want to get. Yeah, this is me figuring out that which one is the rudder control and which one is the brake control, because you're kind of supposed to be on that. Uh, yeah, see, someone had a parachute out there. Oh, uh, dear. <laughs> you, you really want to line it up right there on that center line there. Uh, they give you after you land, you do get a score on how well you did. And let me tell you, this is not like the game is not like a long, long mission to uh, uh, not long, long shuttle mission. All it does is it sets you up for your approach to land this thing. You can look at the cockpit. You can look at your instruments. You can choose uh, you can choose the view from the from the chase plane. There's some on screen guidance to show you where you should be lined up. And it really is just this. It's, it's like sitting. It's like having a, a basketball hoop in your driveway and you've got a basketball in your hands and you can over the course of hours, days, weeks and months just get better and better at shooting free throws and that's how much fun this thing is one simple thing but you do it successfully once and then you think okay but i was way off that line and i was sort of skidding left and right and my score kind of sucks i want to see if i can what did i do wrong and how can i do this better and it is just so entertaining and almost meditative because it's all about tiny little like motions uh works on works on the works great on the iphone works also on the ipad 
I have sometimes been playing it via airplay uh, on my on my big TV, and that's like this that that is my real you know, gameplay <laughs> moment when, I, when, I've got, when I've got this big screen in front of me. Uh, it's five bucks, but damn worth it. Because uh, sort of, looping back to uh, Renee's recommendation of Overcast, I'm so glad that uh, that uh, he priced it. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad that that uh, that he priced it at five bucks uh, for the unlocked features. I think that too many games and mobile apps are underpriced, and I think that five bucks is not too much to ask for a really nice, polished, professionally done app as opposed to a simple flashlight or uh, or, or sound effects app. So I'm, I'm uh, this is worth it's five bucks worth every penny of it. Uh, Ten bucks maybe I'd have to think about it, but five you know, bucks I, have- I, I was more than willing to give him five bucks for it. I have to admit that, I mean, I'm quite happy paying a little bit more. For, I mean, I know that we've gone to this thing like everything's a dollar, but I actually want to see people charge a little bit more for the apps because I want to make sure that they're successful. I want to make sure this Me is too. a good business yeah, exactly. for them. I want this to be their main job. If I'm buying an app and I'm going to use it, you know, I want it to be, I want them to make enough money in the first couple of weeks that they could hire more programmers or do whatever they I, need to do to make well, it great. And I don't want to see ads in the app and I don't <laughs> yeah. want in app purchases that that's, go that's into the hundreds There's, of dollars. Yeah. Right. There, there are no in-app purchases on this game. You buy it, you own it. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, just 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 as you're saying, Alex, I, I think that if you help somebody to become successful enough that they can afford to take a two-week vacation to someplace nice, during that two weeks of downtime where they're not coding is when their brain is going to give them great ideas for the next big app. So it really does, that extra $2 or $3 you're spending will pay off in the long run in the, in the form of a brilliant new app that wouldn't have existed otherwise, I think. Actually, you know, the EC, the European Union has compelled Google to stop listing apps with in-app purchases as free in the Play Store. And they, I think they've advised Apple. Apple, too. Apple's yeah. going to have to do but the What's the alternative, thing. Leo? Like, we've been thinking about this. Like, if it's a game, if it's like Overcast, Overcast is free with one purchase. But Candy Crush is a very different non-free game. Well, just if don't you- put it in that free category, you know? I mean, that's misleading because they really aren't playable free, many of these. Uh, now, yeah. it is just- unfair because Candy Crush... You know, you really need to buy something, but maybe this you don't. I don't know. I mean, it, yeah. there are games. And what would you like, like, for instance, a good right, example is like I, Plants vs. Zombies. I really felt like the new one really, I, I just lost interest. It was like there yeah. was too many things that I had to purchase. On the other hand, Field Runners, um, you know, I can completely play without buying anything, but I still, I probably spend more money on Field Runners because I, I, I right. buy other little extra points so, so that I can buy purchases and there's in-app infectious purchases. poison. It really is, it really yeah, and I'm not sure what you label yeah. it. Like, do you label it as free with in-app? I mean, is, is fee app something that a normal person But I pay for Field Runners. It? It's not like I paid like you a You call it freemium. There's freemium and paymium. What's yeah. paymium? When it's, there's a price up front and in app purchase. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, last week, one of a, a candidate for my pick of the week was uh, the, the Electronic Arts MLB uh, 2014 app. They created a home run derby app that was <laughs> just all, you, all you're doing is the, 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 the pitcher is throwing tomatoes right at you. And all you got to do is swing and hit dingers. Fun, fun, a fun concept, but it was just every 10 seconds there was some sort of a harangue for, you know, if you bought this special yeah. bat, you could bring it around faster. How about a cap with the logo of your favorite? I don't, I just want to hit terrible. home runs. I want to put a <laughs> dollar and feed a dollar into the machine and then it throws 20 things at me and it's <laughs> terrible. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this rant portion of the program. We are done, done, done. Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun Times. It is always a pleasure. Thank you for being here, my friend. Always a slice. Thanks for having a wonderful Catch wonderful Anako's bar. Almanac uh, on 5x5.tv. And uh, he's also doing the reading the old columns thing. Uh, yeah, I'm, getting, I'm getting caught back up. I'm, I'm way behind, but I'm trying to get... It's, it's so hard to... I don't know how you do it where you schedule your entire day to be sitting in front of a microphone and talking. All I have to do is find 45 minutes <laughs> to every single week, read what I wrote last week. And it's like, if I schedule for Wednesday, something tells me, why don't I try to do it Tuesday? Then I don't do it Tuesday. I plan to do it... Thir- oh, goodness. I just, I, all I, I, I do is sit for you, and talk. Leo, it's so great. It's <laughs> no, I just sit here and talk. It's nothing... I'm not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Rene Ritchie, iMore.com, The Mobile Nations, his debug podcast, many other, uh, anything you want to plug? All, all sorts of stuff going on over there, I know. Uh, the latest debug, I mean, if anyone's interested in Swift, we had a Swift roundtable with Don Melton, who did Wiki, um, WebKit and Safari, Brent Simmons, who did NetNewsWire and Vesper, and Natalia Berdis, who did uh, Kudu, Kudu Kitchen. But I, I, I don't know very much about programming, and I understood a lot of it, and I was really impressed with it. So I, I, if anyone is interested in Swift, check it out. Very good. Alex, nice seeing you. Safe good travels. Thank you. Don't know when we'll see you again, but that's part of the fun. Yes. <laughs> I just know when I come in and I see another seat on the table, I go, oh, good. 
He made Alex, it back. Alex is back. He survived. Mm -hmm. We do Mac Break Weekly Tuesdays, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. We would love it if you would make this part of your uh, Tuesday. But if you can't, don't worry. We've got on-demand audio and video available so you can listen anytime, anywhere. Uh, use your podcasts app or whatever. What was the name of Marco's app? Over. Overcast. 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 Oh, and in Overcast, he has a list of all the alternative podcast if, apps yeah. if you don't like his, which is a very classy. Wow, movie. that's very classy. Yeah. Sounds like Overcast is the one, though. I'm going to try that. Uh, I don't, well, it's, yeah. It, it's, it's a good, it, there's such a personal approach to podcast apps, and I'm glad that there are five or six really good ones, yes. because if you think that that a certain, that, that Downcast is terrible, it's not because it's terrible, it's because it's working in a way that's not in harmony with what you yeah. like, and maybe you'll like Overcast better. Right, there are choices. We also uh, encourage people to try Stitcher and uh, and commercial apps like that as well. There are lots of great ways to listen or get us on iTunes. Download us, sync up your iPod, <laughs> plug it into your cassette deck on your car and listen. Your 8-track adapter. Your 8-track adapter and listen. <laughs> I don't care how you listen. We've got audio and video for you at twit.tv slash mbwn all of the above podcast apps. Thanks for being here. Now you get back to work because, oh, by the way, stay tuned. Steve Gibson will talk about yes. uh, iOS security uh, next. But if you can't join us for that, get back to work because break time is over.